I mean, toads do look like fries, just so you know. Just one's, a, one's a, you know, in the water and one's not. Doesn't... So my last week's video had gotten such a soul-crushing response, mainly from conservative male demographic, which, YouTube, why are you pushing my video to that demographic? It was clearly not made for them. And why are you all watching it? I, I, I need a break from controversy, so I open my Netflix account, hoping to maybe see something I want to watch and maybe comment on. And I saw 2002 Britney Spears movie that they apparently bought. I didn't know that they did that. But yeah, it's a 2002 movie called Crossroads with Britney Spears. And it has 3.7 rating on IMDb. And I expected it to be terrible, right? 3.7. That's bad. That's so, so bad. That's awful. It's kind of good. I mean, it's okay. It's a, it's a movie about three teenage girls going on a road trip. So it's a, like a campy teenage melodrama. It's not that special, but it's really not that bad. It's kind of cute. Most comments, uh, reviews on, on IMDb were just people who hate Britney just because she's Britney, which is absolutely insane. How is How has this woman survive all of this i have no idea where did she get the strength to survive all the like turmoil she went through incredible so i watched it twice <laughs> and i want to talk about it it's cute it's cute it's it's really cute if you're like in a bad mood and you feel like sad and, and, and bad and depressed and everything that's that's the perfect movie because it's kind of it's easy to watch it's not that serious it's not that deep it's cute it's funny and britney is in it and i'm not like a huge britney fan never have been but she's a huge part of pop culture and i do admire her for having survived all that like honestly can you imagine the level of uh, of backlash the level of hate she has gotten over the last 20 years it's insane and she still keeps getting terrible backlash because of her instagram account which to be fair is a little bit weird uh, but not like in a in a bad way more like in a whimsical way i i i think she's incredible i love her <laughs> the more i learn about that woman the more i i like her and admire her i wish if you clip someone made a compilation on youtube like uh, the best moments of britney on x factor and she's so cute she's so sweet she's like it's a little bit sassy sometimes but in a very adorable way. She's an adorable human being. So it's the, it's a movie about three best friends. And it begins with them being, I'm assuming like 10 years old and they are burying a time capsule, right? So they are putting their, their things in, the, in, the, in a box and is there a mariachi band near my window? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. If you can, I apologize. Anyways, they're burying their, their precious little, little cute little stuff in that box. And before, uh, before Britney starts narrating the story, you hear an iconic phrase. I want some dirt. I don't know what that was. Someone wrote that or was that improvised by a little girl? I don't know, but love it anyways britney starts narrating the movie and we segue to her bedroom where she is a high school graduate right it's a like graduation day and she's valedictorian and she's dancing in her cute outfit and that again was the other thing when people were mad at this film because of her like wearing underwear in the shot i guess but that's just early 2000 movies and you know the male gaze like what does Britney have to do with it I I don't know whatever she dances and she's cute and adorable and their father get, uh, barges in and uh, basically we kind of get the feeling that she never has a chance to be herself and to just enjoy herself which is obviously like reflective of the real 
Britney's life. I mean, now we know that with all the conservatorship thing happening. But yeah, there's a lot of like parallels between her life and the movie. But yeah, she's valedictorian. She's this overachiever. She's uh, proper and she's smart and she's ambitious. And her dad wants her, her to become a doctor. The scene is followed by the prom night, obviously. And uh, the girls in the beginning, the, the 10 year old versions of the girls, they they made a pact that on the night of the graduation, on the, on the night of the prom, they'll go to that place where they bury the box and they will, you know, excavate it and um, do something. I don't know. They didn't plan that far ahead, but <laughs> they decided they're gonna come back there at midnight and reminisce, I guess. So the three girls is Brittany, who is, whose name is Lucy. Is there a name that suits her less than Lucy? I, Lucy? What? It's, I, anyways, Lucy, Mimi, and Kit. So Mimi really wants to go back to that place and unbury the box and she approaches Brittany and Kit and they both say no but then magically they just all appear there at the same time and that happens more than once they just <laughs> they say no and they magically they're there and it's never explained why they're there <laughs> or how they get there <laughs> and Brittany is there with a shovel like what girl would you get a shovel from you were at graduation night at prom night wearing your cute pink prom dress and then all of a sudden you got a shovel which you could shovel from is it something you just carry with you at all times huh anyways but before that she goes to the prom and then the weirdest scene happens where she she's at the prom at like the the, the, the party the venue and she stands near this 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 huge staircase right and uh, Mimi approaches her like, well, let's go under the bed. And she's like, no. And then her friend, her lab partner joins them and they just go upstairs, Lucy and her lab partner. And the next scene is them in bed attempting to lose their virginities to each other. Where did they go? What is this venue that has beds upstairs? Like, what is this place? What, or did they leave and went somewhere else? I'm so confused about that. I watched it twice and both times I was, I was trying to understand the circumstances of this situation, but he had like keys in his hand and there's, I have no idea what happened. But anyways, they, she chickened out and she said that she wants her first time to be magical, which is, I mean, fair enough. You want to, your first time to be with someone you, actually like and not the guy who knows too much about frogs and toads i mean toads do look like frogs just so you just ones that ones that you know in the water and ones not it doesn't uh so they excavate the box kit takes out her barbie doll britney takes out the locket with uh, the picture of her mom because her mom walked out on her when she was three and mimi <laughs> mimi takes out a keychain with a little globe on it and she's like I wanted to travel the world that's why I'm going to LA <laughs> that made me laugh so much not Americans thinking that America is the entire world there's nothing beyond the US it's just <laughs> it's just LA anyways uh, and that kind of jump starts the the entire plot line of the movie Mimi is going to LA with her friend and she invites them to join her she she's going to LA to audition for some record label and she invites the girls to join her to to be uh back singers and just to yeah have a fun trip together whatever so they all say no and then the next morning they're at her car again <laughs> Like, we don't see them changing their mind. We don't see, like, the be the behind-the-scenes thing. They just show up all of a sudden, and they're like, yeah, we're here. <laughs> Anyways, they jump in, into his fancy car, and the guy, the car owner, uh, his name's Ben. We briefly saw him at the prom. He was the guitar of the band that was performing there. And the only thing we know about him, that he was in jail, because he allegedly killed someone. The girls don't know that, only Kit knows that because she overheard someone saying that. Well, she didn't overhear, someone someone told her that. She doesn't really 
get freaked out or scared by that she just <laughs> jumps into the car and it's all fine it's not it's not gonna be brought up for like a while like half a movie <laughs> kind of insane but uh, they do ask Mimi who this guy is and uh, they do that by whispering in the car but the guy is like right there you know when they whisper in movies um, about a character who is literally right there and they somehow don't hear it they argue about music because girls obviously want to hear pop music because all girls like pop music there isn't a single girl in the world who doesn't like pop music and he wants to listen to rock music and there isn't a single girl out there who likes rock music so obviously it's a conflict of interest but to be fair his music is a lot better than theirs no offense to Britney but uh... so they drive the whole day and then they stop at a motel that is supposed to be disgusting and it's supposed to be like very like disheveled motel that is like ew how can you stay here and it's a perfectly nice room uh, i don't understand american sometimes like w are we supposed to think that this is an ugly and terrible motel some of my actual apartments were worse than that what are you what are you talking about? I don't speak, rich girl. I don't. I don't get that. So then, the next morning, we we see the girls all gossiping in the bathroom about the guy, and that's when we finally, well, everyone finally finds out that he is allegedly a, a murderer. And again, they don't really freak out about it. They don't confront him about it. They just go about their day, and um, yeah. What? <laughs> I'd be like on the first flight out of there. At this point, I think hitchhiking is, is safer than this. <laughs> Although it's not. Do not hitchhike. It's dangerous. Anyways, they go back on road and the car breaks down. And obviously, what, what is an early 2000s flick without a hot girl knowing everything about cars? So the car broke down. It's the radiator, gasket, whatever. I don't honestly care. And they need a lot of money and they they, they don't have. The car broke down in the middle of Louisiana, which apparently is where Britney is from. I guess that was kind of like the reference. Um, anyways, they break down literally like in the middle of highway in the middle of Louisiana. And then they decide to make money by performing at a bar, which I'm assuming that takes place in New Orleans, because where else would you have such clubs where you can perform and make money? How do they get there? Where do they stay? How did they know about that place? They are at this bar. The way this bar works is you can go on the stage, you can perform. Um, I don't know what you can perform, I guess anything. And the crowd, they will, if they don't like you, they'll like let you know that they don't like you. And if they do like you, they give you money. They, they pass this jar through the audience and you can put money if you enjoy what you're seeing, right? And then of course, what kind of early 2000 movie flick without you know putting the main character on the spot? Yeah, Mimi was supposed to actually perform, but she can't. That's, that's all she says. I can't, I can't. She never explains why. I mean, she's pregnant, but she's not like sick or anything. She, 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 she still stays on stage and she just performs the back vocals. So I don't know, but obviously the whole thing just exists. So Britney would actually perform it instead of Mimi. And Britney is incredible because of course she is. And the crowd gives them a shit ton of money. Someone in the, in the reviews wrote $700. I have no idea where they get the sum from. They don't say that in the, in the film, but Ben, counts the money and he says that it's enough to fix the car and for the rest of the trip. The, the cost of a car was like 350 plus labor, so however much that would be, I have no idea, 400, 500, um, plus the trip, and I don't know how much that would be either. So, I mean, they made a few hundred dollars, which is ridiculous. Of course it is, it's ridiculous. That's like, that, that's not gonna happen. No matter how hot you are, uh, so it is silly, but it's it's cute. Come on, it's cute. It's not like outrageous. The movie is not trying to be serious. It's it's cute. So Mimi goes on stage, and girls stay behind as like vocal um, back vocal singers, and uh, we hear the entire intro to I Love Rock and Roll, which is pretty long, and then she fails, 
and then they have this like very small like communication and then Britney goes instead of her and will listen to the whole intro <laughs> again <laughs> like I don't know if that like how I would do that and how I would change that like I, I get it the song has to start from the beginning but it's just it was kind of like come on already yeah yeah we heard that already you know so anyway they play um they sing they they perform incredibly and everyone's clapping and they made a shit ton of money and for some reason ben is like counting it i don't know why girls aren't counting it especially since britney is like a the fucking uh, valedictorian genius or she's implied to be one why is Ben in charge of money? Why Why are you trusting him with money, girls? You barely know this man and you think he might have murdered someone. Why are you trusting him with money? Anyways, he's counting the money. Meanwhile, some douchebag is hitting on Britney at the club, right? There's still at this club, bar, whatever. And he becomes like more and more aggressive and Ben sees that and he punches him in the face which probably makes you think how is ben feeling right that's the when you see that interaction the first thought that um popped in my head was like how is ben that must have been so traumatic look i'm i'm not mad at you for what happened back there okay but don't worry he's fine he's not he's not mad he's not mad at britney he's okay or maybe he's not because he literally leaves the whole night they're staying at this hotel he leaves and we don't see him until the next morning and that's never explained because i thought that you know maybe he's doing something good or maybe he's doing something bad like it's gonna add some context to the story like it's gonna you know no no he just leaves the girls stay behind they trauma bond they share their stories and then the next morning, Ben is back and they are like, where have you been? And he just out and that's it. That's the end of con What was that about? Is that supposed to say that he was actually mad? But that makes it worse. Why would he be mad at Britney? Because some dude at a bar hit on her. What? <laughs> I don't... I don't understand that, but I guess we're just supposed to forget that. Whatever, the girls stay behind. So the girls stay behind, they get uh, drunk. Well, Mimi doesn't because she's pregnant, but Kitten and, 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 and Brittany, calling her Brittany, her name is Lucy, but I, for some reason, I don't like it. I don't know, I, thought, I, I think it doesn't suit her. Whatever, Brittany is Brittany. Uh, so the girls stay behind and they share their stories and Kit talks about her terrible mom and Mimi talks about pregnancy and um, that it's not actually her boyfriend's or ex-boyfriend's baby it's some guy who took advantage of her a few months back and it's 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 a very cute moment they talk they they get close and they promise to each other to be friends because they kind of drifted drifted apart for a while there and they you know missed each other and they are enjoying each other's company and they made each other promise to you know be friends be better at being friends they go back on the road and they i guess they they have a, a stop somewhere and while girls are shopping or peeing i don't know what they're doing ben falls asleep so they steal his keys from the pocket and decide to drive the car by themselves which ben met multiple times mentioned that he's not allow anyone to drive his car but you know they didn't want to get stuck in a small city so they decided to just drive the car by themselves and then once ben wakes up he throws the biggest tamper tantrum i've ever seen a grown adult ever do and i don't know how old he's supposed to be in the movie but the actor actually is like 28 so he's you know he's like my age he's an adult person he's not a high school student he's in the grown-ass adult and he just throws this ridiculous damper tantrum he literally he goes out of the car and he starts like kicking his foot on the grass and just <laughs> growling like making growling noises mind you at this point the girls still think that he might have murdered someone and went to jail for it so instead of going like we need to run and save ourselves <laughs> they decide to make britney go and talk to him like girls do you just not care about the safety of your friend what the hell i would not allow any of my friends to talk to that fucking loser anyways she talks to him and she asks him like 
you know, what's wrong. And he's like, I've been surrounded by girls for days. Can you, can you imagine how I'm feeling being surrounded by stupid girls talking about their stupid girly things for days? <laughs> Oh uh, God! Mind you, she. This is the love interest of the story. She falls in love with him. Like the movie is not necessarily about like romance. It's not about that. But she falls in love with him at the end of the movie. She loses her virginity. I hate this phrase. But she has sex with him, whatever, for the first time. That's like supposed to be a guy we like. <laughs> And that's and and that's how he behaves. Early 2000 movies were wild, man, wild. He gets back in the car, he starts driving them again, and at this point they finally confront him about his imprisonment. And uh, it turns out he has been to jail, but not because he murdered someone. Uh, he has like an actual story uh, explaining that, and it sounds, you know, just like something that happened and then he says like so you thought I was a murderer why did you get in a car with a homicidal maniac like is that movie trying to be like self-aware because yeah that's what we were thinking about for the entire movie why are you girls in the car with him why are you not confronting him about it why are you not running the fuck away and at this point they stop at some like very beautiful place they look at the sunset and uh, they decide to camp there. While they're there, Brittany reads one of her poems to him. <laughs> I literally just wrote poem, exclamation point, in my notes because I don't know what else to say about it. It's not a poem, it's one of her actual songs, but in the movie it's supposed to be like a poem that she wrote while they were on the road I guess and it's just the silliest thing ever and then he starts laughing for some reason because she has ash on her face god the movie is cute no, it's cute it's very cute d d genuinely cute but some scenes are just so ridiculous not like in a bad way though in like in a cute way but they're funny some little bit of foreshadowing happening when they're uh, at their at their camp spot Mimi teaches Kit how to throw a punch and they'll come into play later. Right, Mimi is the MVP of the story. I love her. Again, like reviews on IMDb, the ones that didn't hate Britney, a lot of them hated her. Uh, who's, by the way, a Karen actress, uh, this, this Karen 2020 movie. That's her, that's the actress. Just some piece of trivia for you. But I think she did a decent job and I just like her character. If I were to choose a friend out of all of them, I would have chosen her. She's just really fun and cool. I don't know, Brittany is a little bit annoying and Kid is just way too spoiled. But they're all cute, like they're all genuinely likable. I feel like the, the actress who played Kit, she did an incredible job. She had, she had to play someone who's like very spoiled and arrogant, but she still is likable. Like, I don't hate her character, I still like her just because of the acting. Britney's acting is maybe not Oscar worthy, but it's definitely not as bad as people make it seem in the comments, in the reviews. Like, it's fine. I mean, for someone who's not an actor, she did a great job, especially compared to like other not actors like Beyonce. Have you seen that? Come on. She did a, she did a fine job, genuinely. Like, she did not fail. And she was rewarded like worst actress by some shitty MTV uh, award or something. Like, it's just so mean. People were just so mean to Britney just to be mean with, to her. It was like a thing. Being mean to Britney was like a thing you do. I, mean, I remember that. As a teenager, well, when I was in 2002, I was not a teenager. I was a child. But when hating Britney became like a personality trait, I was a teenager. I remember it very well. I was not a fan of her because I don't like pop music that much. But I, I couldn't understand why people hate her. I just, I couldn't wrap my hand around it. It was just, just a weird time. Like a girl had a public mental breakdown and people hated her for that. What? Like now people, I feel like at least the majority of people will be quite empathetic. Weird, weird time. But yeah, for some reason people also hated Mimi. Although I think she did, she did great. I don't know. So yeah, she reads her stupid, stupid poem and uh, they almost kiss but they don't because you know there always have to be a scene where main character almost 
kisses her or his love interest, but then something stands in the way and they can't and you know. Uh, they go back on the road and in the next scene they are finally in Arizona. That's where Brittany's mom lives. One of the reasons why she joined them on this road trip is to see her mom. So they drop her off in Tucson uh, in front of her mom's house and she goes inside and they they leave and she gets into uh, Kim Cattrall's house, <laughs> her mom's Kim Cattrall, and then follows an edifying story about how you shouldn't reach out to your abandoning parent. If they want to reach out to you, no matter how old you are, they'll do that, right? If they're not reaching out, don't waste your time. It's not gonna go well, and it doesn't go well. She gets her heart broken by her mom, which is kind of sad. It, it's a sad scene, honestly. So she goes back to the hotel where they're staying, and for some reason, Ben is like, consoling her instead of her friends. I don't get that. In order to make her feel better, he surprises her with writing music to her poem, and they just organically kind of like sing the song, and it just perfectly works out and then they finally kiss and uh, love, love. But at this point he has done so many shitty things that I hate him, I can't really, it's hard for me to be like happy about the character kissing, kissing the, this guy even if she is genuinely interested in him because well he's he's quite aggressive, violent and misogynistic and why the hell did he ever say I'm not mad at you? Why would what would possess you to be like I'm not mad at you for almost getting sexually assaulted at a club? Excuse me, what? So back on the road, they finally are in LA. They stay at a hotel, and Brittany and what's his face? They have their you know sexual relations and the yay all great in the meantime kid and mimi goes to kid's boyfriend who lives in la it's not only a boyfriend it's her fiance and uh, her reason for coming to la was to see her boyfriend so they drive to her boyfriend's door they knock on the door and there's a girl there he's not he's not alone and she gets obviously very upset about it. And then she notices that he is holding a blue bottle of beer. And that's the same bottle that Mimi mentioned in her sexual assault story back at the hotel. And she puts two and two together and she realizes that that's who sexually assaulted Mimi. And she punches him in the face and then Mimi runs, aw runs away and she falls down and uh, miscarries her child. That's the only scene that I'm actually a little bit mad about to be fair, because it's just messy. Just reminds me of how our society treats pregnancies, I guess, because in my opinion, obviously it's just my opinion, in my opinion this, uh, the scene exists is because the baby is the product of sexual assault, They that the, the movie makers don't necessarily want the character to follow through with a pregnancy, which obviously it's up to a woman, she can make the choice whether or not she wants to keep the baby after being sexually assaulted, but it is a controversial topic, so they didn't want her, I'm assuming, they didn't want her to actually follow through with a pregnancy, but at the same time, they can't really mention the, the, the A word. They can't really, you know, have her have an abortion because even though 2002 abortions were very much legal, especially in California, it's not something you do, especially in a teen, in a teen movie. So in order to make the story play out the way they wanted, they had to literally have her have this traumatic experience of falling down the stairs and miscarrying her baby. And that's very sad. It's just a very sad reality we live in, um, especially now with abortions, you know, haven't been outlawed on like federal level. I mean, you can still get an abortion in, in the state of California, but there are multiple states where you can. It's just, it's just kind of maybe a little bit sad and, and mad, but I understand why they did that. I don't think they could have done it differently, especially at that time, but it is just a little bit infuriating that that's, that's the reality. To be, to be honest. So she loses her child and Mimi is in the hospital and Kit visits her and she's very apologetic to her. Which also the other, the other thing is like why would Mimi not 
tell her that? I mean, she's literally engaged. Kit was literally engaged to that dude. And you didn't want to mention that that dude is a rapist to your friend. I feel like that's a weird thing to do. And it's again, it's just like to drive the plot further. I don't think that would have happened in real life. So when that happens, Brittany calls her dad. I don't really know why she calls him. That's never explained. But I guess she just figured they need an adult involved in this mess, which is smart, of course, but I don't know. Why didn't they call like Mimi's parents? Or, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, she calls her dad and her dad uh, comes to LA. She, he spends like a shit ton of money on, her tr on his trip to LA. He wants to pick her up. He wants them to go back home to Georgia instead of uh, staying there for a few more days for the audition. And she agrees. She tells Ben and the girls that she's going back home with him and she's not staying through audition and everyone is sad about it and everyone's trying to persuade her to stay, but not really like that enthusiastically, like kind of a little bit, but they give up very quickly. So they get in a car, Brittany, the girls and her dad, they get in a car and they drive for like, a second before she changes her mind and tells her dad that like let me go and she's like don't do what you did to my mom let me go which is like ew girl what no your mom is the asshole in that story not him what do you what do you mean or she decides to stay she gets out of the car and ben is there the creepy stalker he is he's just there they kiss in front of her dad. They don't just kiss, they like make out in front of her dad, which is another weird thing to do. <laughs> but whatever, she decides to say, they go to the audition and she performs and she's amazing and everyone loves her. The movie ends with uh, like a shot of the beach and them like hanging out at the beach and running around being all happy and cheerful and stuff. The movie just uh, reminded me of that, you know, bygone era where life was easier somehow. Which I know it sounds, I know it may not be actually true, but because I was a kid at that time, it did, it was easier for me. And I feel like just in general, like the last few years have been hard for everyone, right? And it's just a very like, light and, and silly and cute and campy movie with young Britney in it and it's just it's such a feel-good movie I, I loved it I have a petition I want everyone who watched this far which hello there are probably like five of you if you actually like the movie or you just want to support Britney or you just hate injustice go to IMDb and uh, rated 10. It's not a 10 out of 10 movie. It's like 6.5, maybe seven, but it's 3.7 now. So we need to like up the rating. I feel like it deserves it. It deserves a lot more love. I'm actually gonna do that too. I've never, I've never left a review. I've never rated any movies. Right, 10. Okay, yay. Actually, a lot of people rated it 10, I guess, to achieve the same goal as, um, I'm trying to achieve. Go to IMDb and give this movie 10 out of 10 to to change this this unbelievable injustice that only exists because people hate women. In this case, Britney Spears, who did a good job, who isn't like a decent human being. She's She's kind of nice and who is also incredibly talented and like what what are you what are you mad about? If you're ever wondering how it is to live in Mexico. Thank you for hanging out with me. Have a good week and uh, let's change this incredible injustice that happened in the history of early 2000 cinematography.